the next talk uh, is uh, about zero knowledge arguments for matrix vector relations and lattice based group encryption and uh, this work is by Benoit Libert, San Ling, Fabrice Muartem, Huang Guyen and Hua Xiong Wang and Hua will give the talk. Uh, can you switch on the microphone? Hello? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, and uh, hello everyone. I'm going to talk about um, construction of lattice by group encryption scheme and the uh, zero knowledge arguments uh, necessary for that construction. This is I work with uh, Ben Olibet, San Lin, Fabrice Mohatem, and Hassan Wang. Okay, so first I will uh, recall some background on group encryptions and uh, discuss our difficulties toward realizing uh, a lattice-based group encryption. Then I will state our reasons and describe the techniques that we use to overcome the, the difficulties. Okay, so let me start with group signatures, which is an important uh, anonymous authentication mechanism uh, proposed by Coleman Van Hess in uh, 91. In this setting, we have a, a group of users and each member can anonymously sign messages on behalf of the whole group. This means that uh, uh, group signature app is hiding the source of the message within uh, a group of register signers. Group encryption is uh, a primitive uh, introduced by uh, Kiat, Sunit, and Jung in AsiaScript uh, nine years ago. It is an uh, encryption analog of uh, group signatures. Okay, so we have a group of uh, register receivers and each sender can encrypt messages to an anonymous group members. Okay, so uh, in this way, group encryption uh, aim to hide the destination of the message within register receivers. Another interesting feature of both group signature and group encryption is that the users are kept accountable for their actions. In case of this build, so there is a um, tracing authority and opening authority who has some kind of secret key and who can identify the um, signer of the message or the receiver of the ciphertext. Okay, so more formally, a group encryption scheme allows encrypting while proving that uh, the following hold. First, the ciphertext is well formed and is it intended for some register group member who uh, will be able to decrypt. Second, the opening authority should be able to identify the receiver should the need arise. And thirdly, the plan test should satisfy uh, some properties like being a witness for a public relation or being a private key for a given public key. Okay, so this additional requirement is you may be useful for spam protection. As pointed out by KTY, some possible applications of the group encryption are in the context of firewall filtering for anonymous trusted third parties in cloud uh, um, storage services. Group encryption also implies a hierarchical group signature, which is a general form of group signatures. Okay, so let me now to briefly review some previous work on group encryptions. In the work that introduced group encryption, KTY also provided a modular design that based on uh, ordinary digital signatures, anonymous secure public key encryption, and interactive zero knowledge proofs. They also demonstrate uh, concrete instantiation based on uh, number theoretic assumptions. Okay, so the KTY schemes only considered interactive setting but it, uh, the scheme can be made non-interactive in the random Oracle model via the uh, fast semi heuristic. Two years later, Catalo et al. introduced a non-interactive construction in the that is secure in the standard model under parent bay uh, uh, assumptions. Subsequently, Anne and George suggest various improvements for constructing group encryptions. Okay, and uh, Libert et al propose a refined traceability mechanism that allow to identify the uh, on the ciphertext the 
uh, intended for a specific uh, group members without affecting the anonymity of all of the, the other members. Okay, so for the time being, on existing realization of group encryption rely on traditional number theory assumptions. So usually we don't uh, want to put all of our eggs in the same basket. So it may be uh, worth considering construction from other assumptions, like uh, lattice base. So let's make crypto interesting and uh, Lattice assumption is still uh, resist against quantum computers. Okay. Okay, so let me move to the context of lattice based crypto, and in particular, consider lattice based group signatures. Indeed, it's a very active uh, topic in the last six years. The first construction were proposed by uh, Gordon Katz and Vacuum Tan in uh, Asia Crypt uh, 10. Since then, various improvements have been made in, the, in terms of uh, security, effic efficiency, and uh, functionality. And the uh, most recent scheme already achieved um, um, uh, logarithmic size in the number of group users and work on for dynamic, dynamic groups when the first construction only uh, achieved only kind of linear size and, and, and only uh, hand can handle uh, static groups. Okay, so, but no lattice based group encryption so far. So uh, we ask the question, what's the main difficulty here? Okay, so uh, given that both of the primitives can rely on uh, almost the same components, like ordinary signatures, public encryption, and supporting zero knowledge proofs. Okay, so in the, the next, I will um, describe that the main difficulty lies in, that, in the problem of constructing a suitable supporting zero knowledge proof for group encryption. Okay. Okay, so let, let's um, consider the existing zero knowledge protocols uh, that's used for handling latent based relations. Uh, the, in previous work, uh, under protocol, in previ previous work can be uh, categorized into two main classes, uh, snow like and stunt like. Okay, snow protocols was originally proposed for handling discrete lot relation but it was then so very useful for lattice relation by Lubashevsky who uh, introduced the reactions, rejection sampling techniques. On the other hand, stern Live protocol was first proposed in the context of code-based crypto, and it was first considered in the lattice setting by uh, Kawachi, Tanaka, and Sagawa, and then it was empowered by uh, Lindeton uh, with uh, techniques called uh, decomposition and extension. We observed that uh, the uh, two classes of techniques uh, mainly deal with linear relations, in the sense that the uh, equation that contain uh, only terms of the form bublet matrix multiplying with some secret vector, where the secret vector may satisfy some additional constraint like smallness or have uh, some special arrangement of uh, entries. Okay, so uh, the typical example for, of the kind of relation is the ISS relation and the LW relation. In the ISIS relation, we have an equation A times X equal to U mod Q, for where the, the, the matrix A and vector U are published, and the secret uh, vector X is small. The LW relation uh, is represented by um, the equation uh, A times S plus E equal to B, where matrix A and vector B are published. Uh, vector E is small secret uh, noise, and the secret S may be small. Okay, so um, this also holds uh, the kind of two class also work for uh, encryption scheme based on LWE and signature scheme based on SIS problems. Okay, so um, now let me go back to the, 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 the context of lattice based group signature and see how the, the techniques work well for uh, group signatures. A, modu a modular design for group signature is called size, then encrypt, then prove. It consists of the following. First, each user has a signature sigma on his identity ID, and that signature is issued by the, the group manager who manages that group. In the process of generating group signatures, then each user is asked to encrypt his identity's ID to a ciphertext C, and uh, that's done using the public key of the opening authority. Then, the signer have to prove in zero knowledge that the following is hold. First, he has a secret valid 
message signature pair with respect to the manager uh, public key. That means that he is a certified group member. Second, C is a well-formed ciphertext of ID with respect to the public key of the opening authority. That means that he has done the encryption honestly and the opening authority can recover ID uh, should the needs arise. Okay, so um, because of, uh, if, we, if we use uh, SS-based signature and elliptic based encryption, then the relation underlying this statement can be uh, represented by linear equation. And it can be uh, handled by uh, previous techniques. Okay, so now if we consider the, the context of large uh, group encryption, then things become more complicated. Okay, so, so uh, the modular designs by KTY has yes, followed. Its member has a key pair, SKPK, for an anonymous encryption scheme. And the manager signs the member's public key PK and publish the pair. PK and the signature sigma. When the sender wants to send something to the group, so uh, a message mu, then he uses uh, PK to encrypt message mu that certifies some relation R and obtain a ciphertext C. The sender also encrypts the public key uh, PK under the public key of the opening authority and obtain a ciphertext that we call COA. Okay, that's for enabling the opening feature. Then the sender has to prove that uh, the, f the following two parts. First, C is a correct encryption of some message mu with respect to a hidden public key. And second, the sender knows a valid signature system on that PK with respect to the public key of the manager and that COA is a correct encryption of that PK with respect to PKOA. And also the message mu satisfies some relation R. Okay, so we observe that the statement in the second part are similar to the one appear in the context of uh, Latin Bay group signature, and it can be handled with previous techniques. The challenging part is essentially the first part where everything except for the ciphertext is hidden. Okay, so even the public key that the sender used to encrypt uh, the plain text is hidden, okay? So, if we use some LWA-based encryption for this, then the problem would boil down to proving an LWE relation with hidden but certified matrix. That's the other form, X times S plus E equal to B mod Q where this matrix X here is also hidden, but we additionally have to show that uh, we have some signature on X, okay? So we call this quadratic relation, and we identify this at the main obstacle uh, on our way towards realizing Latin Bay group encryption. And um, overcoming this kind of difficulty uh, likely uh, requires some new ideas. Okay, so now let me state our result and uh, describe the techniques we use. In this work, we introduce a zero knowledge arguments for quadratic relations. So it's including the relation that I described where we have mat where, uh, matrix X and vector S may satisfy some additional relations, okay? Our approach is to develop stance protocols and uh, to improve its capability from uh, handling only linear to uh, handling quadratic relations. In the process, we uh, propose some new techniques that may be of uh, independent interest. Okay, so once this uh, most difficult part is realized, so we can use it to build the first Lattice Bay group encryption scheme. The scheme is proven secure in the KTY model under the SIS and the LWE assumptions. Okay, so um, now let me uh, recon Stan's clever ideas, okay? Stan's protocol is a zero knowledge protocol for the syndrome decoding problems where given mat public matrix A and public vector U, we have to prove that, okay, we know a secret binary vector X that have fixed Hamming way W. 
So Stern did it with two main ideas. First, permuting, which means that means to prove the constraint of the witness using random permutation. Specifically, the send the prover send the verifier a permutic vector pi of x. Okay, so uh, we observe that the following uh, equivalence holds: vector x has the constraint binary vector with weight w if and only if pi of x does. Okay, so uh, if the verifier sees that pi of x has this constraint, see he should be convinced that uh, x is a valid witness. And moreover, th because pi is random, it uh, uh, completely protects the actual value of x from the verifier's view. The second idea is markings. That means to uh, prove the linear equation using a random masking vector r. Specifically, we send the verifier with the y that equal to x plus r, and show him instead that a times y equal to u plus a times r, which is sufficient to, uh, which is sufficient to convince uh, the verifier that the original equation a times x plus uh, equal to u holds. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our quadratic relation. We will employ a two-step solution. In the first step, we will pre-process the given quadratic, quadratic relation so that we obtain a somewhat more familiar form. Second, we will exploit Stern's idea, especially um, the permuting idea, where we will set up some kind of permutation that leads to a similar uh, equivalence like the above, and then uh, exploit the, mute, the, the random permutation. Okay, so uh, in the first step, we transform uh, the term matrix X times vector S into the form of public matrix times a secret vector. To this end, uh, we do the following. First, we write this one at the sum up on up the product XI, SI, where the XI are the columns of uh, matrix X and the SI are the entries of vector S. Okay, so all of them are elements of uh, the Q. Second, we look at each of the term XI times SI and use a decomposition uh, matrix to uh, break on the, the entries of uh, vector X into binary and obtain an equation that XI times SI equal to that public matrix multiplied with a vector whose entries are XIJ times SI, where XIJ are binary and SI are still element of GQ. Next, for each of these terms, XIJ times SI, we do the same decomposition process and obtain the form that, okay, so it can be represented at a public vector multiplied with a binary secret vector. So combining all of these sub-steps, we will obtain uh, the, uh, the form X times S equal to Q times Z mod Q, where this Q is a public matrix and vector Z is a binary secret vector. Okay, so this looks uh, quite familiar, but actually the, um, the harder part is still ahead. Why? Because vector Z is still uh, quadratic. It still has some kind of quadratic nature because each of its uh, entry is a product of a bit from matrix X and a bit coming from vector S. Second, the component bits also additionally satisfy all the relations. Okay, so uh, now we go to the second step when we handle this vector Z. We will employ a divide and conquer strategy where we view the whole problem as a bunch of sub-problems. Where for each sub-problem, we aim to prove that a secret bit Z has the form Z equal to C1 times C2, while preserving the possibility of demonstrating that the component bits C1 and C2 satisfy all the equations. To this end, we will uh, use a permuting technique that based on two bits. Okay, this is as follows. First, for every big C, we denote by bar C the bit one minus C. Then for every two big C1 and C2, we define a vector, an integer vec a binary vector of length four that we call extension of C1 and C2, whose entries are the following. First, C1 bar times C2 bar. 
Second, C1 bar times C2. Third, C1 times C2 bar. And fourth, C1 times C2. Okay, so now for every two bits, B1 and B2, we define the permutation called T of B1 and B2 that transform an integer vector of length 4. Uh, that we call V, whose entries are V0, 0, V0, 1, V10, and V11. To the vector whose entry are V, B1, B2, V, B1, B2 bar, then V, B1 bar, B2, and V, B1 bar, B2 bar. Okay, so um, why should we come up with some kind of uh, artificial permu permutation? Okay, the final goal is to obtain an equivalence. Okay, for all of C1, all of the big C1, C2, B1, B2, we have the, this uh, equivalence. But the V is a correct, is the correct extension of the big C1 and C2, if and only if. The permutation T, B1, B2 of V is the correct extension of two bits, C1, XOR, B1, and C2, XOR, B2. Okay, so how does it work? Let, let's look at, uh, let's consider an example to see what's happening here. Suppose that C1 is 1 and C2 is 0, then vector V, which is the extension of C1 and C2, would be the vector consisting of uh, the entries 0 times 1, 0 times 0, 1 times 1, and 1 times 0, with the exactly vector 0, 0, 1, 0. OK, so um, we look at the entries of this, and we denote by v0, 0, 0 is 0, v0, 1 is equal to 0, v1, 0 equal to 1, and v1, 1 equal to 0. Now. Uh, Let's consider the permutation. Suppose that we will permute with the two bits, B1 equal to 1 and B2 equal to 1. Then the permutated the permute vector T, B1, B2 of V will be the vector V11, V10, V01, and V00, which is uh, the vector 0, 1, 0, 0 in this case. And it is exactly the extension of two bits, 0 and 1. And it is exact, uh, and zero is exactly uh, C1 X sub B1, and one is exactly C2 X sub B2. Okay, so how can we uh, we uh, make it useful? Actually, this answer already give us a solution to the sub problem. To do this, we first extend this secret bit Z to vector V, uh, which is the extension of C1 and C2, the two component bits. Then we permute this vector v with random bits b1 and b2, and give it a verifier the permutic vector. Okay, so the verifier can check that the right hand side of the equivalent holds, which should convince him that the left hand side also holds, and which convince him that original bit z must be well formed. Furthermore, the random bits b1, b2 here essentially act as kind of one time bet that perfectly hide the value of C1 and C2 from the verifier's view, okay? So secondly, we, already ha we also have to prove that the same big C1 and C2 satisfy all the equations. So to do this, we, we set up a similar mechanism at their other appearances and use the same one-time best at all of the places. So that's the main idea. So once we have the solution to this sub-problem, then we, we can also obtain the solution for the whole problem. Okay, uh, putting everything together, so uh, our new stern like techniques allow us to handle the quadratic relations. And to instantiate our group, lattice by group encryption, uh, uh, we use the following ingredients. For encryption, we use the an anonymous CCA2 CQ, uh, public key encryption that obtained from the ABB identity based encryption uh, via the CSK transformation. For signature, we use uh, the signature scheme uh, uh, that will appear at this conference, and my uh, colleagues, uh, Fabrice, will present it to you tomorrow. This uh, signature scheme uh, interacts well with zero knowledge proof. And finally, combining with uh, known stern-like techniques for encryption and signatures, we obtain the zero-knowledge protocol 
that is required for the group encryption construction. And uh, that's it. Thank you. So unfortunately, we're quite late, so let's uh, skip the question session and give people a chance to switch tracks. Thank you.